Welcome to Cape Pasa. I'm Michael Lewis, a city councilor here in the city of Grants for District 4. And our guest this morning is John Stockwell. John is involved in the greenhouse project out here in Grants. We've invited John to talk a little bit about the, the greenhouse and, and what's happening here in town. So welcome, John. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, good. Tell us a little bit about yourself and where you're from and, and uh, how you found Grants. I'm a Canadian citizen. I was born in uh, Leamington, Ontario, and uh, I grew up in that town. That town is famous in that area anyways for the greenhouse business and vegetable producing. It's oh, really? in the southern part of Canada. It's directly north of Cleveland across the Great Lake, uh, Lake Erie. The greenhouses are located in absolutely the best spot in North America, as the experts say, for growing green plants, whether right. it's vegetables or flowers or, or anything. Yeah. You can control the temperature of the greenhouse, the humidity and the climate of the greenhouse, but it's really the sunshine that makes the difference. The direct light? The direct light from yeah. the sun can't yeah. be duplicated by uh, artificial lighting. Right. It's so important for quality and consistency of vegetables or any, any type of plant. Right. So that was the opportunity to come down here. Yeah, we've seen activity out there, uh, a lot of uh, folks working out there. In fact, I've had a few people uh, that work out there walk in here, and we just got into a conversation, and they said, yeah, we're, we're cleaning up out there and doing some things. What, what have you done so far? Well, the biggest thing was to get the place back uh, cleaned up. And where we're at now is every part, nut and bolt, piece of glass, is either on premise now that's been ordered from all over the world to come to put that place back into the um, operation that it was before. What is the, the eventual goal of, of the greenhouse? The goal of the greenhouse is to expand it and uh, use the existing for a very sophisticated um, nursery operation. In other words, we would start the plants in there and they would go through a series of uh, conveyors, totally automated. So this system uh, stages the plants from a cutting or a seedling or a seed. And it, on the existing side, would take about 60 days to go through that process. And they would be continuously spaced by robots and you know to give them more room to grow. And just before the plant is ready to flower, it would go to the other flowering operation to finish for the next 45 days and then go for harvest. Right. And um, an interesting thing too is when they go from the flowering stage to the harvest, and when I'm speaking of flowering, I'm talking about any kind of medicinal plant. Where, right. You know, it's not a vegetable operation anymore. It's strictly um, plants for that have medicinal value. Right. Yeah, I was reading in uh, 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 your press release that there are over 4,000 plants in the world that are used for medicinal purposes. And is this uh, what you plan on doing yes, with the greenhouse? Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, because of the climate here, we can replicate and enhance that type of agriculture. In other words, by plant breeding. And a lot of these plants, to answer your question directly, yes, there's thousands of different plants that have some medical use without uh, you know, modern is an alternative to modern medicine anyways. Right. But a lot of the problems with these plants are that they haven't been, and in, in the, in the same with hemp and cannabis and everything else, very little research has been done over the last right. years to enhance these plants. So right. therefore, you know, it, it would be a breeding program research, you know, right. to develop a better seed, a better plant, to, to commercialize, you know, right. the value. Yeah, I, I also read in this uh, press release that uh, you've partnered with New Mexico State University and there's, there's a plan to involve them in the, this project? Hugely important to the success of this operation is to have a uh, accredited university such as New Mexico State uh, to come in. They have the technology, they have the uh, background for agriculture. They're, you know, that, that university, I believe it was 1883, was started in New Mexico you know, 40 years, 30 years before it became yeah. a state. And uh, they're research intense. Yeah. So this is a perfect fit for something for the future right. where they could come in and help develop, you know, right from a seed to a finished plant, 
and through breeding processes and everything else, it would be, it's just a, a necessity for the, for the success right. of this operation. Right, you know, uh, New Mexico State is our ag school here in the state. And of it's course- It's not only we, an ag st school yeah. in the state, it's the, one of the 40th best universities in the, in the United States of America. It's yeah. Well yeah. recognized as an ag school. And of course, we have a satellite of the university here in Grants, New Mexico State University of Grants. And um, so we, we, have, we already have a good connection with the school down there in Cruces. So I think we're gonna get a lot of support from uh, the main campus uh, for this project as well. We're both, that, them and us are both looking forward to this. Right. And uh, so, so tell us a little bit about the, the partners that, you, that, uh, that are involved in the project. When we decided that we were going to go forward with this operation and, and uh, fix the greenhouse, one of the things that we looked at is what we could do with the existing facility and uh, we decided that everything is possible here so we decided to go and get two of the best companies in the world to re-engineer what we already have and design, develop, automate a fully integrated operation for potted type plants right. for, for medical use. And um, they've done a wonderful job. They've got technology from all over the world that this is the first time that it's all actually come together in one one area like this, and that would be, you know, Grants, New Mexico. Right. So it's just top of the line companies. They've done this all over the world, and uh, we're very fortunate to get them. Yeah. So I understand that they're going they're going to come in and put up the second phase of the buildings. The the this Dalsum group is going to come in and and, and they're and automating the existing. Okay. Our job is to finish cleaning it up. They will come in and. Um, revamp the irrigation system, the heating system, the, the, the greenhouse has uh, shade curtains that will be turned into uh, blackout curtains, you know, for this type of production. Okay. And uh, in the existing, they will install artificial lighting. Now the artificial lighting is only to supplement right. the natural sunlight here because in the wintertime we still lose so many hours a day. Right. So the seedling stage of these plants require, or it, it speeds the process if right. we've got 18 hours of light a day. So the lights would would um, enhance the natural sunlight yeah. here. So their job would be to install the lights, revamp the operation, automate it, and make it fit with the the new proposed 66 acre operation. Right. You know, you mentioned that it would be fully automated, but there are actually quite a few jobs involved in this project, aren't there? There's a lot of jobs involved. It's it will take two years to um, construct, to revamp the existing and construct the new. More than two years, probably about 27 or 28 months before it's totally operational. And um, those two companies, Kodima and Dalsum, are allowed to send one or two supervisors, but the rest of the um, um, construction Work workers crew, yeah. mm -hmm. are coming from this area. Oh, yeah. That's part of the deal. They're not allowed to bring them in from other states or other countries or anything. Right. The, the idea is that in this whole budget that we've got, it'll be them that'll train the construction workers going forward. And we got plans, and the reason for doing that is once this is done, we hope to be able to c continue the building yeah. and using these same construction workers. So there's about 275 jobs to start with. Yeah. Once the place is operational, we plan on using, everything will be integrated in grants. The head office, the, uh, the management of the company, the sales part of the company. So any gross receipt tax, the town or the county will be able to take advantage of that. Everything right. will be mostly just looking at the United States in general, but 300 and some million people, there's only 2.2 million people in the state of New Mexico. So you would think that you know, our plans are that, you know, you're going to be supplying at least the other 47 states right. and, and Canada. Yeah. So that's the plan. So everything is export out of the, out of the uh, state for all intents and purposes. Right. Yeah, uh, and, and you already have investors on board, correct? Yes. We, 
through this EB-5 program, our investors are um, investing $800,000 each and taking an equity position in the company. So there'll be a time that if everything goes well, that we'll make arrangements for them to have an exit strategy, but they're in, you know, for a considerable yeah. amount of time. Yeah, typically when one of these companies like this starts, um, they go for a while on, on, the, on the, the capital investment that's come, come, come into the business, but then they go public. Is that one of the things you guys have, have in mind someday? You have to, you know, the, because of the amount of shareholders, the company actually is operating in a public form mm -hmm. right off the, right the uh, get-go, mm -hmm. although it's not listed. Right. So it's already a public, public company. Our job would be to um, create value. Right. And as we create value, there'll be a time that, you know, we'll have to create a, a, um, a public market so right. people that want to have an exit strategy. The existing facility out there is about 20 acres under roof. Is that correct? It's 80,000 square meters, which equates to about 20 acres, yes. 20 acres under roof. And, and uh, you guys have actually purchased the land across the street from that, correct? We purchased some and are in the process of purchasing other land to complete the expansion. And we're also, you know, considering exactly how much water we would need. Right. And one of the interesting things about this operation is there's no waste of water. This is a ebb and flow type of system, so whatever the plants use, the rest of it goes back through the system and is um, purified and um, sent back out to the greenhouse. But we only water one time a day this type of facility. Right. Let's take a short break. We'll be right back.